Good day everyone, I am Jason van Yeden and I'm the registered dietitian at Irene Village Care. And some of you may know that I did my ketogenic talk um, at ATSA, which is the Association of Dietetics of South Africa, where I spoke to a whole bunch of dietitians speaking about the ketogenic diet. And uh, also with myself doing my diploma in sports nutrition, I have quite a few people asking me, but Jason, should I be following this diet for weight loss or you know performance and those type of things? And my presentation was about 45 minutes um, talking to the dietitians. So I basically want to summarize it in a few minutes, just a few of the factors. So the first one being, will it allow me to lose weight faster than a standard diet, so to say? Because a standard diet, of course, you know, we're using carbs, protein, fats, fruits, vegetables, all those type of things. Meanwhile, the ketogenic diet, it's less than 5% carbs. You know, it's about 15, 20% protein, maybe 25, but we need to look at your ketone levels there. And the rest is fat, so it's basically about 75% fat then you know after a few days you then go into ketosis uh, you, we're using ketones which come from your fat um, as your main fuel energy your source of fuel with regard to let's say the standard diet we were now using a bit more carbs right okay so basically that's the summary of the ketogenic diet but with that we they took they did a study or quite a few studies actually where they looked at they gave the same amount of calories for a standard diet and a, a ketogenic diet but the same amount of calories and at the end of the study they saw that the weight was actually or the weight loss was the same there was actually a little bit more weight loss with regard to the ketogenic group but it's because um, a big reason for that is that they actually had slightly less um, glycogen in their body. So glycogen is basically stored sugar in our muscles. If you can, if, if that's a very simplified way of looking at it. So if you're having a diet that's got you know moderate to high amounts of carbs, you're going to have more stored glycogen and sugar in your muscles which is good because then you know when you exercise and those type of things have you ever heard of carb loading you know before a big race you have a bit more glycogen to work with yes you still have glycogen when you are in a ketogenic diet but you don't make as much as if you were having you know your carb sources so still have enough for all your performance and for energy and those type of things one gram of glycogen holds on to about 3.4 3.5 grams of water so the people in the ketogenic group had slightly less glycogen meaning that slightly less water and remember one liter of water is one kilogram so these people weigh slightly less but you know as soon as you you know go back to a, you know, say a standard diet and you have more carbs your glycogen levels uh, will go up you will then have more water and your weight will go up but it's not necessarily fat remember there's a big difference between weight loss and fat loss okay so that's number one is that in summary does a you know standard diet um, and a ketogenic diet do they have different rates of fat loss no if it's the same amount of calories then it shouldn't have a, it shouldn't be a difference remember with the ketogenic diet it is very very high in fats and people aren't used to having that amount of fat uh, so if you go if you go back to uh, you know if you go to the calories that different macronutrients have one gram of carb has carbs have four kilocalories per gram one gram of protein has four kilocalories per gram and then um, fat is nine, so and fat is quite you know quite energy dense. So a lot of people aren't really used to having a lot of butter, a lot of oil, a lot of coconut oil, a lot of cream, a lot of full fat options in their type of foods. And when they do, and a lot of avo, and when they do actually have those things in high amounts, they don't really enjoy it. It gets a bit too much. I might feel a bit nauseous. So they end up having less, um, let's say, calories in general, especially if it's quite a high calorie diet. Um, and they end up losing weight naturally because they're in a caloric deficit, not because they're in ketosis. Okay, so that's the first thing. Now the second thing, a lot of people do ask about, what about my cholesterol? Is it gonna be good for my cholesterol? Is it gonna go up or down? And the thing is, what you must remember is that cholesterol, total cholesterol involves LDL cholesterol, which you know, seen as the inverted commas bad cholesterol, then you get HDL, which is the inverted commas healthy. I'm just trying to remember H uh, is you know for healthy, so the HDL. Then you get triglycerides. So let us look at the summary of this. And this is done over many, many studies. Then um, basically they've come to a conclusion on the effect that it has. All right, let's look at each thing individually. If we look at total cholesterol, there were about 16 studies done and total cholesterol, there was a notable increase in total cholesterol, as we know, might not be such a good thing. So, uh, you know, if you're really struggling with cholesterol levels, total cholesterol levels, it might not be a good idea to go on the ketogenic diet. And then the next factor, we have our triglycerides. And then look, 
Basically, in summary, triglycerides, they mainly increase when we have a lot of you know, glucose and sugar in our body, uh, especially high levels you know, at one time over a long period of time. So generally people with diabetes, uh, if they don't have it well controlled, they might, we might see that they actually have high levels of triglycerides or if there's a lot of you know, sugar and sweet intake, those type of things. So yes, on a ketogenic diet, because you're not really having those things because you can't, um, you know, because it doesn't fit in your diet because you have to have so little calorie, um, so little um, carbs, should I rather say, is that there's been a significant drop in triglycerides. So let's say in your cholesterol profile and that you have that your triglycerides are just excessively high, maybe a ketogenic diet can help you get that down. But we need to look at many, many different factors. This is just one of them. Then we need to look at our HDL, which is our healthy cholesterol. With LDL now, then what we've seen is that with the studies that there is actually a notable increase with regards to the, uh, to the amount of LDL cholesterol that you have following a ketogenic diet, which might not be a good thing. If you really struggle with LDL cholesterol, or if you have a family history of someone having high LDL cholesterol, then maybe the ketogenic diet might not be for you. But the thing is, we need to now look at, this is then on average, but remember we have um, you know, our omega-3, our omega-6, our monounsaturated fats, our trans fats, our saturated fats. Um, so they're all different types of fats that have very different effects on our, like we mentioned, total cholesterol, um, LDL, HDL, and our triglycerides. So within a ketogenic diet, we can actually make sure that you are getting no trans fats, um, so those, that is really not a good fat that you get in a lot of your takeaways and deep fried things that we shouldn't anyway be having. Um, then as well, if we have too much saturated fat, that can increase, that is not always so good for our cholesterol profile. But then if we get in more monounsaturated fats, such as, you know, our nuts and our avo, those type of things, it can be better for our cholesterol. And then omega-3, if we get more omega-3 with regards to, let's say, eggs and fish and maybe even omega-3 supplements, that is also good for our cholesterol profile. So yes, in general, those studies looked at, you know, on average what people are taking, but uh, with the effect on cholesterol, but as dietitians, if we can then look at specifically what type of fats you're having in, so the quality and quantity, um, we can then maybe mitigate those factors going forward. And the last thing, so the things, what about gaining muscle and what about endurance? Okay, so yes, uh, the has actually seen the, with regards to the studies that have been done on the ketogenic diet, uh, it's a bit more easier to lose, you know, fat mass. We spoke about, you know, um, being in a caloric deficit, but it can be challenging for a lot of people to actually gain muscle. It is definitely possible if you are in a caloric surplus um, and you have the right training stimulus and you have enough protein um, and you, you know you look at the right intensities, you can still gain muscle, but it might not be the best for it. Okay. Then the next thing is with regards to endurance training. So yes, with if you become keto adapted, okay, this is inverted commas, the term that's been going around, keto adapted, it means that you can you actually use your fat a little bit more efficiently and can use it for, um, let's say with regards to a little bit better with regards to performance. So if you are running long, let's say long races, so endurance races, you know, then the thing is if you're not going to be refueling, if you keep it in a certain VO2 max, so VO2 max is basically the amount of oxygen that your body can use at one time during exercise, if you keep it within a certain amount um, of that, so a certain amount of effort, you can actually run much longer um, or significantly longer than someone that's let down carbs, that's not refueling. Um, but the thing is that as soon as you go up, you know, a steep hill or you sprint, it's going to take you longer to recover compared to someone that is using glucose as their main source of fuel. So if you're going to be doing, let's say, a flat race and it's just going to be kind of a steady heart rate all the way, then yes, you can actually run a bit longer. It might be better for you. Even though with studies done, some people um, benefited a lot, but some people actually did worse compared to when they were on a glucose diet uh, or not a glucose diet, but where they're using glucose as their main source of fuel so it really really does depend and that why that is why it is so important to come see a dietitian that we can look at you um, you know getting you into ketosis looking at the performance side of it what is your goal to lose weight gain muscle I use it for more energy those type of things and the last factor that I get asked about a lot what about this keto flu so as I mentioned earlier when you you know when you go into ketosis um, you, you're not because you're not eating a lot of carbs you lose a bit of glycogen uh, and you might actually find that you some people get a bit of a headache they get a bit of brain fog they might get a bit of cramps 
um, you know, migraines, those type of things, and that can be mitigated. Uh, so there are certain things we can do, such as drinking enough water, having salt, uh, you know, sodium, having our potassium, having our magnesium, calcium, those type of things that we then need to look at getting into your diet. So let's say potassium, for example, we get a lot of potassium um, in a lot of our uh, vegetables, like even a lot of our fruits and our starches. But now, uh, and in particular with adults, we need to have 4,700 milligrams of potassium a day. And that can be quite challenging without all those carbs. So we might need to look at supplementation or we can still get those things into your diet. Let's say with the to even spinach, um, we can put that into the ketogenic diet to make sure you're getting enough uh, potassium not to get those you know, keto flu, so to say, or to go to the cramps that might come from there. Uh, so yes, come and see a dietitian. Let us look at you. Let us look at your specific goals. Let's look at the reasoning of it. Let's look at, you know, why. There's so many factors. I've literally gone into only four factors um, and in summary um, with regards to the ketogenic diet. So let us see what uh, is this diet for you. And at the end of the day, I actually want to end off with this. Any diet can work for you if it is simple enough, is it, if it is adaptable enough, is it you know, practical enough and is it sustainable? Is it sustainable for you in the long term? Are you gonna do the ketogenic diet for six weeks and then go off of it? Then it's probably not the best idea. Let's work with uh, should I say, uh, you know, the standard way of going through, let's maybe do portion control, a bit more exercise, um, getting in your more fruit and vegetables, those type of things to get you to your goal. And that might actually be more sustainable in the long term. All right, thank you guys so much. If you have any questions, if you want to ask me about any ketosis things, uh, you can give me a phone call, you can send me an email. The things will, the information will be in the description below and we can take it from there. All the best, bye.